Long time ago in Serbia, there was a czar, a king, and he paced back and forth, back and forth, outside the door to his wife's room. You see, the queen was giving birth to their first child. He was so excited. Would it be a girl to become queen, a son to become king? He didn't care. He was so happy. And then the doors opened, and there was the midwife, and she said, Your Majesty, you have a son. And as he went past her, she said, But he didn't listen. He walked right past her. And there was the queen lying in bed. She looked so tired, but she looked so happy. And in her arms was a bundle. She handed the bundle to the czar, and she said, My husband, we have a son. But he didn't listen. It seems the kings never listen. He looked at that beautiful face, and then he pulled the blanket back further, and he went, <gasps> He couldn't believe his eyes. The midwife said, Sometimes they grow out of them. Them were two huge, hairy ears shaped just like a donkey's. They were enormous. His wife said, He's beautiful otherwise. And the king he looked down at that baby with these huge donkey ears and he thought to himself, oh My God, they'll never respect him. When he becomes king, they'll never obey the laws. They won't love him. There'll be chaos in the kingdom. And he started to worry about things that hadn't happened. And he decided they would keep this a secret. And they paid the midwife her weight in gold to go far away to another country. And she did. And she kept her secret. And she lived as a great lady. Now he and the queen decided that they would take care of their son. No one was allowed to see him unless he was wearing his little crown. They measured his head, and a little crown was made that covered those ears. He never went anywhere with it. And as he grew, the crown grew. They bathed him. They cut his hair. He wasn't allowed to play with other children in case the crown would fall off and they'd see all those ears, those huge, huge donkey ears. He wasn't allowed to go to school. He stayed at home. Now he grew to be a fine young man because his parents were good, fine people. But one day, the Tsar and his wife were killed in a tragic accident. And now the young prince became the ruler of his country. And you see, kings and Tsars are just like you and I their hair grows, and one day he needed a haircut. So he called for the royal barber to come to his chambers. The guards let him in, they walked out, they closed the door, and they locked it. And when the barber and the king were alone, the king reached up and he took off his crown. And the barber just looked. He'd never seen anything like that in his life. He recovered, and he trimmed the king's beard, and he trimmed the king's hair, and he even trimmed the king's ears. And then the king said, Do you see anything different about me? The barber said, Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> you have ears like a donkey. And the czar said, Really? And quick as a thought, his sword flew from its scabbard and... Thum, 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 thum. He cut off the barber's head. Every two or three weeks, he needed another trim, and every two or three weeks, another barber came to visit, and every two or three weeks, another barber disappeared. Till finally, there was only one barber left in the entire country, and he was called to the Tsar's mansion. Oddly enough, he got very sick that day, and he turned to his young apprentice, a boy of 12, and said, You go. Me? I, I, I can't cut the king's hair. Oh, yes, you're, you're, you're really good, and I'm so sick I can barely move. You go. And so the boy packed up his combs and his brushes, his scissors and his razors, and he went to the palace. The guard who stood at the door was huge, and he looked down and said, What do you want, boy? I'm here to cut the king's hair. And the guard said, Really? That's too bad. He was led to the king's chambers. The doors were opened. He walked in. And then they locked behind him. But when the Tsar turned around, there was a boy. And he thought, oh my, I can't hurt a boy.
And when he took off his crown, that boy thought to himself, wow, that's wonderful. And he trimmed the king's beard, and he trimmed the king's hair, and he trimmed the king's ears. And when he was finished, the king looked at him and said, do you see anything different about me? And the boy smiled and said, no. And the king relaxed. He finally heard the answer he'd been longing for. And he said, good. If you keep my secret, you keep your head. And he became the king's barber. And every week now, he went to trim his beard and his hair and his ears. And the king loved the boy. He started to ask him questions about his people, ask his advice. And the boy, he felt good that the czar really wanted to listen to him, that really treasured his advice. And they became close friends. But you know what it's like when you have a secret and you can't tell anyone. That secret starts to eat away inside you. And so it was with the young boy. And soon he got sick and he went to his bed. Now the old barber, he still lived with him. And he said, what's wrong? Are you ill? Yes, it's horrible. I have a secret I can't tell anyone and it's eating me alive inside. Oh, you can tell me, said the old man. If I tell you, we'll both lose our heads. Don't tell me. But you know something? I have to tell you, there is an old saying that my grandmother told me. And the saying was that if you dig a hole in the earth and you whisper your secrets to Mother Earth, it'll make you feel better. Really? Well, it's worth a try. And so the boy took a shovel and leaning on it like a crutch, he walked out into the forest. Now he found a clearing. On one side, there was a red rose bush. On the other side, a white one. And he dug a deep hole. He whispered into that hole. The king has the ears of a donkey. And he covered it up. And the minute he said that, he felt better. And he walked back to the village. But something magical happened in that hole. A tree grew. And in one day, a huge weeping willow stood in that clearing between the red and the white rose bushes. And the next day, the gypsy children came through, and they cut off those weeping willow branches, and they made whistles, and they sold them to all the children in the village. But these whistles didn't play a tune. They sang a tune. And the song was this. The king has the ears of a donkey. The king has the ears of a donkey. The king, the king, the king, the king. The king has the ears of a donkey. Now the king was on his balcony having breakfast when some children walked by playing their whistles, and he heard, the king has the ears of a donkey. He put down his knife and fork. He called his guards and he said, bring me my barber. And when the young boy was brought before the czar, the czar said, you told people my secret. I didn't tell anyone, said the boy. Then why do all the children know? Why are they singing it? I didn't tell a soul. I was sick because of your secret. When I went into the woods, my old friend said if I dug a hole and whispered it to the earth, that I would feel better. And I did. But that's who I told the secret to, Mother Earth. Show me, said the king. And so they walked out of the palace and through the village, and they came to the woods. And there was the red bush, and there was the white bush, their roses still blooming. But now there was a tree in between them. And the boy said to himself, I don't remember this tree. And he turned to the king and said, I'm sure this is where it was, but this tree wasn't here. And the king took out his sword and shoo, cut off a branch. And he whittled a whistle and he blew into it. And the whistle sang, the king has the ears of a donkey. And the king stood there and he thought to himself, I've been a fool. He reached down, he took the boy's hand, and he took off his crown. And they walked back through the village so everyone could see that indeed he did have the ears of a donkey. And some people pointed, some people smiled, other people laughed. But he was still the king. They still loved him. They still respected him. Well, except for the widows of some of the barbers. But he was still their czar. And he learned his lesson. You cannot hide a secret forever. And when he was an old man, 
ready to give up his throne. He had no children of his own. So he gave his crown and his kingdom to a man who had once been his barber and had taught him a lesson and had learned the lesson that it makes no difference what we look like on the outside. It's what's in our hearts that count. And that's the story from Serbia of the Tsar's ears.